to the Go Dyslexia podcast, where dyslexia experts share strategies, technology, products, stories, and more. And now, your host, author, and personal trainer for the brain, Dr. Erica Warren. I am so pleased to feature Winston Chen, the author of my favorite app for readers with dyslexia, as my first of many free video podcasts for Go Dyslexia. Winston founded VoiceDream while on sabbatical on an island north of the Arctic Circle, and his flagship product, VoiceDream Reader, is an amazing assistive technology device that assists with text-to-voice or audiobooks. This top-selling iOS app has a recent free comprehensive update with some new extraordinary features. Come learn about this creation and view a demonstration of this amazing tool that is changing accessibility of the written word for individuals with dyslexia around the globe. Uh, Hi, Winston. I am so excited about having you here to uh, talk to us a little bit about your new release of VoiceDream Reader. And my first question to you is, how can Voice Dream Reader help students with dyslexia? Yeah, well, the, by the way, first of all, thanks for having me here. Uh, it's, been, uh, it's, it's been really exciting. I've been working on this update for almost a year. Um, so we, as you know, it went out uh, last Thursday, uh, the, the big release. Um, you know, a, a story behind the, the, how Voice Dream Reader was created um, was that I, I took a year off and, and I wanted to, to write a, a little app for fun. So I thought, hey, wouldn't it be fun to write an app to, to, uh, um, to read stuff out loud? And, and really, I was, I was experimenting with what would developing a mobile app be like. Yeah. Um, right? So it was as much of a, of a personal interest and hobby. Uh, and certainly didn't think that it was uh, going to be uh, going to turn into anything. Um, but I, I remember the first email I got um, was a teacher, and he says, I've got this great student. Uh, he's really good in math, and math uh, except he has trouble taking exams because um, he has some sort of reading disability. Um, and later, I, mean, I didn't even know what dyslexia was. So I, I, you know, this, yeah. this was a whole new world to me. Um, and then I am... Um, um, so, so he said, I, I, you know, I got my iPad, so I load up the exam I have in, the, in my iPad, and I give my iPad to my student, and, and there he was um, sitting in the, you know, rather than me having to read the exam out loud for him, he is now independently can take my iPad, listen to the questions, and usually, you know, he does extremely well in exams. Um, and I, I was blown away by this email. Never thought this little app, which I meant as a productivity tool, uh, could have this use. Um, so following that, there were other emails that came in. And my wife, being a, 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 you know, an educator, um, also saw the value. Um, so, uh, so that was when I got stuck. So, so I guess you can say dyslexia, the apps, they, this app being used by students with dyslexia was an unintended consequence but it ultimately became the reason for this app to exist in the first place because it was it was that email actually that turned my head into wow this app can make it such a, make a difference in people's lives not just you know getting people to read more which is a good thing to read more when they're driving or they're in the gym which is basically a productivity tool whereas for this student this changed you know this gave him independence Right. It, it, yeah. You know, which is a, a substantially di- a value at, at a different level in terms of, you know, our, our humanity. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's, that's so exciting. What a great story. Thanks yeah. for sharing that. Um, so uh, what age group uh, at this point are you targeting? Um, well, b- because of the app kind of has a, a productivity tool looking interface and it was sort of designed that way. So in, from the very beginning, um, I, I think it was uh, targeting uh, students probably later elementary school, but all the way through grad student, right? Because it doesn't have, um, probably not appropriate for very small children because it's not colorful. It's not, you know, doesn't have pretty pictures, doesn't have all the, you know, primary colors that, that, that we know children often like. Um, 
show um, um, and in fact the previous version is pretty um, I will call the interface pretty utilitarian <laughs> right? very Spartan uh, the new version added some some pizzazz to it right um, but still I, I would I would say the 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 right group for using this is um, late elementary school like third grade and up um, and all the way to university. Very cool. Um, so what is the research behind your application? Well, um, I, I, when, I, when I realized that this app could be useful for people with dyslexia, I did do quite a bit of reading um, on, on what it is, what's important. Um, obviously, you know, most people with dyslexia, um, you trouble reading printed print, but um, we're very good at, at, at um, you know, speech communication. Right. So, so obviously, you know, speaking stuff out loud is important. Um, but beyond that, there's some, a lot of, there's, there are actually a lot of nuances for, um, for how you would uh, present the text at the same time so that the combination of speech and visual presentation sort of reinforce each other and ultimately makes it, uh, makes comprehension better and makes retention better, right? Because that's in the end, in the end, we're like, we're going after three things. We're going after, you know, productivity. So reading something doesn't take a long, long time, especially if you're a student, you know, you often have more, more material than you can humanly possible to read. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. so how, how quickly you can get through the material is important. Second thing is, 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 com is comprehension. Like when you're reading it, do you understand it? And last thing, just as important is retention. How long does that stuff stay in your memory? Mm -hmm. right? Do you still remember it? You know, a week later or a, a year later. Um, so, and this is this is where um, where uh, visual presentation plays a big role. So, from the very beginning, you know, I, I realized that that um, in fact, the, this the first major feature I added to the product after I, I realized this was was word highlighting. Yeah. Right, because it's so important to to. Um, um, to 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 reinforce the audio with the visual, yeah. Um, and and the the other aspect of this is is that and so now you're dealing with two components of reading, which is um, visual and audio. Uh, normally, when we read visually, the, the you know the UI kind of looks like iBooks, right? iBooks were a PDF reader. You know, the, we we think of a typical interface. You can flip through pages or scroll, and and uh, you can highlight and select text, right? And you highlight and annotate. So those, that's a sort of a visual, you know, reading interface. But but then the audio side of things means that you have to you know, play the the text like music, right? So you, uh -huh. talk, so you have to overlay the the, the reading interface with the um, with it, a music playing interface, right? And those two have to kind of merge together almost, almost yeah. you know, you, you, it's almost like you're presenting the same material in two different modes at the same time. Yep. Right? Um, so so that, that's something I spend a huge amount of time on, um, that's it's to make the, the, those two things work really well together. So, so some of the stuff that, 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 that people might notice, um, you know, the, the, the app has a notion of, a, of an audio location and a visual location, and those are different things. Yeah. Um, right. So a lot of people, sometimes people read, they're looking at, at, at the text as it's being read. Maybe it says, oh, okay, I really didn't know this stuff. You know, I, I don't need to do this, read this anymore. So I flip ahead a few pages. Right? The audio is still playing. That's okay, because we naturally do this. Um, but if you don't keep those two things separate, then that will stop you from reading. Because a lot of text to speech applications, if you do that, it'll, it'll force you to scroll back to where that where the sound is right. right because they don't have a notion that audio and video are in fact two different streams and they the most of the time they, they're synchronizing and converge but sometimes they need to diverge yeah um so just just some small things like that and and also uh, highlighting you know what i um at least user feedback and tells me that a lot of text highlighting applications you have this cursor that jump 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 from word yeah if, if you look at voice stream reader carefully the the, the motion that the highlight goes through the text is very smooth. Yeah. Right? So, so, so what that does is that, and, and that, and the, 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 the way you animate the highlight 
as it changes shape and moves location, um, you know, the fact that it's animated and smooth means it's less, it's, it's less mental burden on you, right? Less distraction. You feel like you're, you're, you know, it's just like music, right? It's not, you know, sound doesn't come, come, come at you in jumps, right? Sound comes, comes to you in, in a smooth flow. Yeah. Um, right, anyway, just, you know, a couple of small things that, that you know, that, that the app does that, that, you know, makes it particularly useful for people with dyslexia. Yeah, and, and what I really love is I love the fact that you can change the colors of the text, you can change the colors of the background, you can change the size, which is so key for so many of my students because, you know, color overlays are pretty huge. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a lot of students really struggle with the contrast of black and white. And, you know, you, there, a lot of people even buy these glasses, which change the background color. Right, right. So you're kind of providing that at the same time, which is, which is super cool. And then you can pick whatever color resonates with you in the moment. Yeah. And, and, and it's just not having such an intense contrast of white and black makes it much more soothing for the eyes. And I know for myself, it makes a huge difference to be able mm -hmm. to change the color background and just psychologically feel so much more comfortable and not nearly as much of a strain on my eyes. So I love that. And I also love the fact that because you're creating this app, it has, I tell my students to do actually one of two things when they use Voice Dream Reader. Either you read along with, with the text and, and as you're listening, and that will improve your sight word vocabulary. Because mm -hmm. you'll see a word and, and you'll start to pair it properly. But the other option is to just close your eyes and visualize because so many kids with dyslexia, they can't, they can't visualize. And the reason why is because they're overtaxed and they don't have the cognitive space to do it. So it really enables them and gives them the ability to practice visualization. And um, I work with students all the time to expand their capacity to visualize. And, uh, and, and this has just been an incredible way to help kids to really exercise that ability. So it's, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I also feel like um, when it comes to, because visual reading is such a struggle for, for, for a lot of the students, any, any small thing you can do um, can make a huge difference, right? Because we know with reading, you know, your level of comfort, um, you, you know, even a, a small difference, if that can, you know, if that can um, uh, get you, get somebody over the hump, yeah. um, right? And then, then reading sort of changes become something that's a complete burden and impossible to something tolerable at least. Right. Uh, right. So, so some of the research that, 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 that we've seen um, on, uh, let's say, font, right? It's not conclusive whether special fonts really help. Right. right? But if it helps, you know, 5%, of the people and they can change the font all of a sudden like, oh yeah, this is, it feels much better to me. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it makes a difference. Um, the other thing, you know, you probably, you, you know, Matthew, Dr. Matthew Schneps, um, he did a lot of research on spacing, um, right? Spacing between lines and spacing between characters and margin um, that, that, that the length of, of, um, uh, of a piece of text is really important because the longer it is, the longer, the more difficult it is for the eye to travel to the next line. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and, and so you, you start losing, you know, you're losing your place. Um, so all these things, you know, configuration. So you can, you can, can type, you can carefully control your reading environment, adjust all the little levers until you get to the point where, uh, okay, this is the best I can, this is my optimal reading environment. Yeah, exactly. But, but even just tweaking it, you know, visualization has nothing to do with the app. But what you're doing is you are giving them the cognitive space to be able to develop that ability. And all the research is showing is, is that those that can visualize have the best reading comprehension. Because can you imagine going to a movie with your eyes closed? It wouldn't keep your attention and you wouldn't really enjoy it. And that's what happens. And that's why I think a lot of dyslexics don't like to read is because they're not getting the visuals. Right and, right. and and this really enables them to develop that capacity, which is such a beautiful thing. I love yeah. it. 
Yeah, um, and when it comes to to to, to reading, um, to to setting the pace, you know, I know you know there's research on on um, to the fact that text to speech sets sets a steady pace. Um, I think the word is scaffolding, right? You're scaffolding the yes. reading experience, um, and 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 that cursor that moves along. Um, you know, becomes sort of a driver of your attention because half of reading is attention, right? It's, it's not, fo- not only focusing attention, but also keeping your attention where it should be. Um, so, um, uh, you know, also, also the, the Dr. Steschnapps published the, the, this paper about how um, he proposes one way of reading, which is to use text-to-speech, um, but rather than your eye reading the word that's being spoken, your eyes should be reading ahead, yeah. right? And, and then, um, uh, and so the sound comes later. So now your mind is doing two pass processing on, on, on the text. First, you, you see it, um, and then the sound comes later. But if you have trouble sounding out a word, that's okay, don't worry. You, you, just, you tell yourself, don't worry about it, because I know the sound is coming later. <laughs> um, yeah. Right. So, so this, so now, then, you know, we, as, as you know, you know, I, I met a mutual friend of ours uh, a lot last week, mid aged guy, right? Been dealing with very successful man, uh, owns, owns his own business, um, but also um, having, um, you know, having to cope with his dyslexia his, his entire life. I also discovered this way of reading. So he likes to write independently. This is just, I just like to read a little bit ahead. Uh, and, and that was really, you know, really revealing to me that, that here's two people um, independently discovering that, you know, you can use that cursor in a different way rather than using that cursor to highlight the word that's spoken. Yeah. Use that cursor to drive your attention forward. Yeah. And yeah. And this friend of ours also uh, said to me that he's actually read more books uh, in the last year than he has in his whole life, which yes. is which yes. is amazing, and that's purely yeah. because of the voice dream reader. Mm. Yeah, that's it's great to hear. <laughs> yeah, it is very yeah. exciting. So, uh, what are some key features to voice dream reader? Because you've obviously updated some things. Do you want to review some of those for us? Uh, sure. So, um, let me. Uh, uh, I can actually pull up the simulator uh, okay. uh, on my Mac. Uh, so let's see. Um, so this is the main the main reading interface. And by the way, one one of the one of the improvements is that it's showing covers of documents from the pre. And this is really good for people with dyslexia because um, the way you you would um, you wouldn't need to read the title anymore, right? You can even if for a PDF document, the fact that you're looking at the first page means it's it's easy for you to find it. Um, and uh, so here is the uh, here is a book. I always include this. Um, so one feature is this. Um, we talked about um, having the cursor be the driver of attention. Uh, to take that step further, um, I call it the Pac-Man mode. Uh, so we can turn on Pac-Man mode and see what that looks like. Uh, let me check what, what voice we're using. Uh, Galisa is fine. It's an Australian English voice. So now if I start reading. Um, Returned she from Mrs. Long has just been here, and she um, told me all about it. I'm not Mr. sure if you... Mr. Bennett made no answer. Do you not... So I'm not sure if you can, you can hear the sound, right? So what happens that the words disappear? Um, and for some people, they just, this just might benefit. This just might act as, a, as an additional... Oh, yeah. Uh, that's motivator. brilliant. Holy moly. I love that because it, it really focuses your attention. And so everything that you've already processed disappears and it's not there distracting you. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's very cool. Um, so, so that's one that's one new uh, new new feature I, I, I've added. By the way, one thing I, I haven't talked about, um, maybe um, interesting to, um, to 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 some users who maybe don't know this product as well. Um, you there's this mode where, uh, and you can tap on the full screen. So now you have a completely distraction free reading environment that auto scrolls. Right, so let's get this going. Do you want to know who has taken it? cried his wife impatiently. You want to tell me 
and I have no objection to hearing it. This was um, so. Um, so, so what, what what that does is that again, you're, you're, it, it takes the work of your eyes moving across the page away from you. Um, and how did you do that feature? Uh, it, it was actually pretty hard when uh, um, to be because I guess it's, the difficult part is not um, it's it's not moving the text, but it's doing everything in a smooth way. Um, as you notice that when when it scrolls, the highlight also moves, you know, animates, just yeah. merges to that point. So you, there's no there's no cognitive load, right? It just moves. Um, it, it moves in in a, in, a, in you know in the way you would expect. Yeah, it's great. Um, and how do you access that feature on the uh, app? Um, a couple ways to do it. Um, but the simplest way is to just squeeze. Uh, oh, the, the, the that makes it text. easy. Yeah, and then to get out of it, just uh, just unpinch. Um, well, another thing I, I you know a simple f feature, but a lot of people I got really good feedback from this. Um, is uh, so right now. Let's say I'm going to start playing. This was the invitation. If I pause, notice that it goes back to the beginning of the sentence. The cursor. Oh, that's nice. Right. Um, and and well, this is the beauty of 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 text to speech, which you cannot do with audiobooks, for example. Yeah. Not only are you producing sound, you also have the text behind it to to kind of to to so you know the 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 context with the material that's making the sound, right? I mean, you know, few, very few of us would, when, when we stop speech, that we want to pick up in the right in the middle of a sentence, you know, a few minutes or a few hours or a few days later, right? I mean, the, the sentence is such a, 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 an atomic unit of, 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 of conveying meaning that there's no reason when you start push play, you should start playing in the middle of a sentence. Yeah. Um, so, you know, very simple, simple feature, but I think, um, she should really help, um, help, help people. Yeah. Uh, so. There are lots of small little things that the average person wouldn't even notice, but now that you think about it, it's like, wow, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. Um, when the, some other features that are useful, um, just from a product, this is, it doesn't show that here is, um, for PDF files, a lot of times are headers and footers that repeat you know, every page. Um, oh, so there's a new feature that lets you uh, define the margins so that the oh. text in the header and footer would uh, get skipped. That's nice. Um, what else? Um, finger reading. Uh, there is, I, I, um, uh, and this is, this is sort of experimental. I wanted to, uh, I thought of this idea of, I wanted to throw this out there and, and get some feedback. Um, and, and the reason is that I, I heard from a, from a few teachers and special ed teachers and assistive technology uh, uh, professionals that some of their uh, students um, find even the slowest reading speed to be too slow, to be too fast um, in the, um, if you use Heather or Sharon or any of the, the acapella voices, they can go down to 50 words per minute, um, but they would sound like this. It will be very slow. Oh, right? yeah. Um, and so some of them say even find, even find that to be too slow and also it, the sound will get distorted. Yeah. Um, so they ask, is there any way to, to kind of improve the situation? So then I thought, well, um, if you're reading that slowly, you know, you're probably looking at every word as a, as a unit. Yeah. Um, so then can we, you know, use, let the student set the pace himself or herself. So then the idea is that you can, you know, you can, uh, you, you can touch the screen um, and then move your finger um, and, and the text-to-speech engine will speak one word at a time. Um, and, and so this way, the student can entirely set the pace uh, himself or herself, right? which may be helpful for uh, beginning readers. Absolutely. I actually tried it, and I love it. And, and I think what you've really done is you've just expanded this app to work for any age. And that feature, and you said, you know, that it's, it's not that colorful, but it, but it can be. 
You can make it as big as you want and as colorful as you want by changing the background and changing the colors. And I think just by having that new, that new option where they can have it read by, you know, having the child put their finger underneath the line is just really making it a, a, a terrific option for mm. young learners. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, looking forward to some feedback. Uh, is it, uh, you know, I'm concerned whether it's easy enough to use, easy enough to, to, to activate, right? Uh, and this is something I want to, you know, I want to keep working on and making sure that, that uh, the ease of use uh, improves over time. Yeah. Um, another feature is um, uh, support for, for, for images. Um, well, unfortunately, I, I don't have a, 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 a book with images here. Um, but um, uh, if, if a, a Bookshare book contains images, um, you can get into a mode where it will show the images as well as, uh, as the text. Again, it's something that would be helpful for, for younger readers as well as um, you know, older readers with textbooks that are, you know, say, geography textbook, right? You kind of need to yeah. see yeah, yeah. No, I've actually looked at the feature and I really, really love it. And it's just great for the kids that, the little kids that really want to see all the pictures. And again, that makes it so much better for the young learners because they really rely on the pictures to help them to learn how to visualize. Um, and, and it kind of brings the fun factor in when you have the images. And so you've just brought the fun factor in for the little kids, which is just yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> So uh, can, you, can you actually even just go over really quickly the features uh, of changing the color of the text and the size? Sure. Um, so uh, all the visual stuff is, is grouped into here uh, in visual layout. Um, and uh, so here's the, all the font. You can change different fonts. Uh, these are the, the choices. Um, I basically curated the, all the fonts in iOS and figure out the ones that are best and also added a few, uh, a few external fonts like open dyslexic and dyslexy, yeah. uh, which, some, which as I said, some people found useful. You can also use the bold versions of all these fonts. Um, so, uh, uh, some people do like, um, the text to, to be, to be thicker. Yeah. Um, and as I mentioned, character spacing, line spacing, side margins. So in this case, if you're using your iPad um, in, a, in, a, in, in a landscape mode, you really should increase that setting so that um, to, to make the lines uh, shorter. Um, for colors, you have the, the, the dark theme and, and light theme and the custom theme. Basically, the three themes are just a way for you to, to, to change uh, settings quickly let's say in the evening maybe you want to use that mode and each mode can you can further tweak the colors text color background color highlight um so let's say here let's you know somebody says i, I have trouble seeing blue so i'm going to change that to you know to a greenish color um so let's set uh oh, oh that's the selection color okay um uh so there is a spoken spoken word color um Let's try that. Um, anyway, then yeah, there, nice. There it is. Um, and um, um, and also some other settings. You know, I mentioned that you can make you know not all the lines visible. You know, only five lines visible and three lines visible. So this way you have yeah. you know, less, less less stuff to clutter up the screen. Um, and you can have the position in the middle or just on the page, and you will screw, scroll the page when it's when it's time to go to the next page. Um, for highlighting, I personally, when you highlight text, I really like to highlight it and then have the text uh, not be um, distracted with by the highlight. So there is a way you can you can have the uh, the, the 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 highlight in the margin. Right? So you know there's a highlight there, but it doesn't you know it doesn't break up the flow of the of the words. That's awesome. Um, so, um, you know, one just an interesting tidbit. Um, uh, a lot of people asked to see, um, you know, why don't you support fully justified, um, uh, text, right? So everything, all the text is, is, is left justified. Um, and, and I would say, I mean, it's easy for me to put it in, 
Um, but fully justified text re research has shown that it's, it's actually horrible for, for reading because what fully justified text does is that yeah. you, you have trouble finding the, the lines, right? And, and also because it changes, depending on which line you're on, the spacing between the words changes. Sometimes it's very small. Sometimes it's really big. Yeah. And when that changes, you really, you know, you, you, every line you have to readjust your pace, um, so whoever came up with that um, probably isn't a, <laughs> it doesn't read a whole lot, um, but I, I don't understand why, you know, for example, some of the modern reading tools like Kindle, you know, where you, how you don't have an option. It comes always fully justified. Huh. Um, yeah, it's strange. That is strange. Well, they obviously didn't put as much thought into it as you. <laughs> awesome. Are there any other key features or you feel like that kind of covers it for now? Uh, that the covers it for now. There's synchronization. You know, you can have a, your your library you load a file, a document on one device, it pops up in, in another. Um, but it's it's pretty massive list of of improvements over the previous version. All that stuff you can find that on on uh, uh, when when you download it. There's a what's new document it describes all the new features. Great, great. And uh, I guess then we'll stop the screen share and we'll just go back to a few okay. other questions. Terrific. Um, what other external tools should be used with Voice Dream Reader from your perspective? Uh, the number one thing is Bookshare. Uh, Bookshare is wonderful. Um, the, almost every book you possibly want to read from a child to you know, a grad student um, can be found on, on Bookshare. Um, and because one issue with, with text-to-speech is that you have to get to the text um, yeah, all commercial books, even if you want, don't mind spending the money to buy Kindle books and, and, and iBooks, um, you don't, there's no way to read, to read this stuff out loud. And, 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 uh, because for, for voice stream reader, I can't get to the text. The, the, the books are encrypted with DRM. So, um, so but bookshare books are all, are, are open. Um, but I, as you know, you, you need to have a, a, a certified, uh, a print disability, um, right. You, visual impairment or dyslexia in order to qualify for membership. Um, but if you do this, that's a no brainer. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. now it, I think this is just a side question. Um, now voice dream reader works with more than just bookshare. Can you tell me a little bit, you know, what are the other uh, types of documents that it can read? Um, the, the goal is to, to try to read it with, to try to be, try to support as many document types as possible. Um, so, um, so besides Bookshare for, for students, what are some of the, the, the second most common material is PDF files mm -hmm. <laughs> because a lot of, um, if you're a university student, a lot of this class handouts and, and research papers come in, in PDF format. If you're in elementary school, in primary school, um, a lot of the, the worksheets come in, in PDF format, right? Um, and it turns out PDF, reading PDF is, is, is uh, horrendously difficult because PDF was designed as a, as a visual format. It makes sure that, that no matter which printer you send it to, it always prints out the same, right? But it didn't pay a lot of attention to organizing the content, the text behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, so getting a, getting the text out of a PDF document and being able to read it in the, in a natural way was 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 not easy. Something that that, that I spent a lot of time on. Uh, so it does support PDF, but then other sort sort of documents are web pages, right? We a lot of content now, more and more coming from from websites, um, Word documents, uh, and maybe PowerPoint. Um, if you're a professional, um, pure text files. Um, by the way, um, Bookshare books are in, in what's called in the DAISY format. Yeah. Uh, and um, so in addition to DAISY format, the app also supports EPUB uh, format. And you can download EPUB books from uh, places like Gutenberg, which has all the classics because they're out of copyright. Um, and, and then how, how do you pull those into, into your uh, app? Or do you uh, pull them into your app or do you access them on the outside? Um, the app can, can directly reach out into these places. So like for, for Bookshare, for example, the app has a dedicated interface to Bookshare. Um, and uh, the, the, the best way to, to do it, I always tell most people, is that, you know, 
uh, get Dropbox or get Google Drive. Those two are, um, or, or iCloud Drive, uh, have a place in the cloud where you store uh, your, basically the stuff you want to read uh, and then use VoiceStream to go and, uh, uh, to go and load the files into the VoiceStream library. Oh, that's really helpful. Yeah. And what about uh, OCR, optical character recognition? Yes, this is probably like one of the top uh, e email subjects that I, I get. Um, so when you when you scan, if you don't have natively digital material, um, then you have to scan it. Um, and if you scan something, it's really just an image. It's a picture. And how really computers are, are not smart enough by default when you scan something to know that there's text on it. Um, so you have to go through this process called OCR, which converts uh, images to text. Um, the app does not have built-in OCR. And, and the reason is that OCR as a technology is fairly expensive to license. Uh, and having that will really add to the cost uh, of the product. Secondly, there are a lot of products out there that do OCR already, especially products that can use the iPhone or the iPad, use a camera on it as a, as a scanner and produce a PDF document that's been OCR, which means that there, the, the, there's text behind the, the, the images. And if you have a PDF document that's been OCR'd, um, then you can load that directly into VoiceStream and, and, and read it. And the workflow is actually not as difficult if you get used to it. It's not as difficult as you might imagine, right? Open up one app, take a picture of the page, um, which creates a PDF file, and you say open in VoiceStream, and then it pops into VoiceStream and hit play and you go, right? It's, yeah. I don't think I, even if I, if I had added that feature in, in VoiceStream Reader, I, you know, will probably take one extra tap. That's right. So, so what uh, OCR program do you recommend? Um, from what I, uh, from, from user feedback, um, the, the, the best of the bunch is probably a, a Abby, A-B-B-Y-Y, Fine Reader. Um, they have a, a terrific OCR engine that also happens to, to work in a lot of different languages. Um, there are also cheaper option, options available. I just, uh, I just downloaded the one called, um, I haven't tried it out, called Scanner Pro. Um, it was on sale in the App Store. Um, I also tried, uh, uh, see, I, I've, got a, I've got a whole bunch of those here. I also yeah. tried, tried Cam Scanner, and that one's very inexpensive, um, which also works. Snap to PDF, that's another one. Also, both of those are, are very inexpensive. Um, so, uh, you know, there, there's so many of them. Yeah, I'm there sure. There are. There are. And I use Prismo, and I really love Prismo. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah, um, so, so the lots, of, um, lots of them in different price ranges. Yeah, and they even have some free ones online. So if you just look around, you can usually find them. Um, easy to find. What yeah. about the Kindle? Uh, well, it's a touchy subject. Um, you, you know, uh, there are there are tools out there if you if you have a large library in Kindle there are tools out there that can um, convert your Kindle books into a format that can be loaded directly into VoiceStream Reader. Um, so there are two things you have to do because Kindle is is encrypted with what's called DRM, uh, and there are tools that can remove that, which means to decrypt the file so that they can be accessed outside of the Kindle read, book reader. Um, and the second step is that Kindle uses what's called a, a Mobi format of eBooks. I think they're the, the only eBook distributor that uses that format. Um, and um, uh, that, has to, that has to be converted, converted to EPUB, which is a more, a more of an open standard uh, that, that a lot of book readers can use, including voice stream reader. So, um, uh, and, if you get it set up, it's not that hard. Um, I, I can't comment on whether it's legal or not. Um, I think there are at least a minimum, there are differences of opinion uh, about it. Um, but, but, but certainly, you know, ethically speaking, um, I, I, I'm not bothered by it because it's not like I'm distributing the book to, you know, to everybody, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing it for my own personal use. Um, but but right. then again, right? I, I wanted to to let people know the option is is there, but it's your decision on whether you want to do it. 
Are you comfortable explaining to people how they can do it? Um, yeah. Um, so there is a website uh, called Apprentice Elf. Uh, Apprentice, just like the word Apprentice Elf, A-L-F. Um, just do a search, uh, Google search on that. Uh, and uh, the, on that website uh, explains uh, how it's done. How down, you can download tools about uh, for, for doing it. Um, so all, all the stuff is there. Uh, and, 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 and the fact that the website is, is up there and, and not being taken down means, you know, I think the industry is probably barely tolerating it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I wanted to ask you, have you created any other apps that can help students or individuals with dyslexia? Um, well, the, the one that comes to mind, uh, two, I have two other apps, one for doing email and another one for, for, uh, for writing. Um, and and so I do, do you want maybe do you want to point people out to to the writing app um, because um, uh, I created it for um, uh, the same audience who, who use voice stream reader uh, people with dyslexia and and people who are visually impaired um, and the reason is that particularly for people with, with dyslexia is that um, most people tell me that they have a hard time proofreading what they have written. Um, because if you have trouble reading, then you might have trouble reading your own writing and detect mistakes. So, um, so that was the, that became what became the central feature in the product is that it, it's, it's an editor with built-in proofreading. Cause I know a, a lot of people with dyslexia, uh, use audio text-to-speech to proofread, right? Using, if you're writing on a Mac, you, you are selecting the text, then you say play, uh, then it plays that for you. Um, and a lot of people use the what's on an iPad. You can also do the same thing: select and then speak. Um, but the problem with that is, you know, you have no almost no control over um, the text to speech engine. You can't stop and say, "Oh, there is a mistake." I'm just, you know, stop and and I want to correct it before I forget it, right? And then resume playing. All this stuff, there's, it's not the, the the workflow there is really difficult. So so I I I, I so I envisioned a product where reading and proofreading sort of are more naturally integrated. Yeah. Uh, also, for example, you can use dictation uh, on the iPad, which is, which is really good, high quality speech recognition um, that transcribes, you know, very accurately. But the problem is that you don't know whether you did the, did, did you perfectly, you know, did what you intended. So there's mistakes in there. How do you hear it? Right. So with voice stream writer, you can use dictation and when you're done dictating, you read right back what you, what you just dictated. So you can, you can check, uh, for, for mistakes. Yeah. And yeah, I, I often tell kids to use that because you might write, you might have intended to write from, but you wrote form, mm -hmm. but the brain would not see that but the brain would hear it immediately. Yes. Yes. Um, and proofreading also is, it's a, it's, you know, it's a, yeah, uh, the different levels of proofreading. Sometimes you're proofreading for content, for ideas. Sometimes you're proofreading just to find, you know, the, the mechanical mistakes. Yep. And when you're doing that, the latter, you, you know, you want to hear the punctuation, right? You want to hear, um, you know, capital, somewhere something's capital or not. You want to hear, um, uh, whether a word, um, let's say red, R-E-D, and R-E-A-D, if a word, if the same sound can can denote different words, you you, you want to spell it out. You want to say this is R, you know, red, R-E-D, or versus R-E-A-D. Um, so you want you want that to be more, you know, more uh, detailed, right? Uh, so the so the the app also supports those different ways to to proofread. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, and I. <laughs> Funnily, funnily enough, the sad thing to, to, to admit is that I would find that probably of all the students that I work with, probably 75% 75 of them don't even proofread. So mm -hmm. the fact that they're kind of doing it as they go mm -hmm. is, is brilliant because once they're done, they've typed that last word, you know, they email it to their teacher or they print it out because they're done with it. And I often tell them, wow, you know, in five minutes, you could change your grade significantly if you just read over it. But many of them don't want to. Or this is the other thing is it's incredibly hard to, dic to, uh, to edit your stuff uh, right after you wrote it. Mm -hmm. And uh, right. so if you can listen to it, 
Mm -hmm. uh, you'd probably be more apt to hear your mistakes than see them. Yeah, yeah. I, I do all my writing, uh, long form writing in if I do a write a blog piece or, or uh, the documentation for voice stream reader, then the update is all written in, in, in the writer because even, you know, I don't have dyslexia, but I, I, I hate proofreading. <laughs> Uh, so, so if, if the <laughs> if if the voice in the computer is speaking it for me and I can you know hear it, uh, that somehow makes it more tolerable. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. This was just such an exciting uh, opportunity to be able to uh, interview you and and learn more about uh, Voice Dream Reader. And I can tell you right now that I already learned some new little tricks. So this has been really exciting and really helpful. So thank you so much for joining us. Great. Thank you for having me. It's been great. Thank you for tuning in to the Go Dyslexia podcast, where dyslexia experts share strategies, technology, products, stories, and more. If you need the show notes or want to check out the webinars, blog posts, and resources, go to GoDyslexia.com. Be sure to sign up for Dr. Warren's newsletter and follower on social media.